Okay, uh, first of all, I would like to thank the Pocket Gaming Connect team for a great event. I've been there for the second year in a row. Uh, hope to visit you in the next year, too. Nice job, guys. So I'm going to speak about the present and future of Final 5 games. But before we start, I'm going to present myself, of course. So, my name is Filip Karmanov. I'm the CEO and founder of Black Snowflake Games, a game day studio which is uh, heavily focused on HTML5 content since 2013. We've developed more than 25 mobile-first HTML5 games since this. Now, let's come to the actual topic. The first thing to state is that Flash can be considered absolute right now. Although Ad Adapter will completely take it down only in 2020, it's pretty obvious that if you are going to success in today's mobile industry, you need to stick to external technologies. Every mobile platform has already discontinued native Flash support. When it comes to HTML5 as a solution for cross-platform mobile games, one of its biggest major, major issues uh, a couple of the previous years was uh, big support diversity uh, among the devices of the same generation. For example, an Android phone and an iPhone of the same year. Even in the different browsers on the same device, the game could launch and not launch. Could be at uh, 10 FPS and could be at 60 FPS. But now I can state that it's becoming a thing of the past. So, let's say a case when HTML5 games is tested on different devices. For example, we'll take one of our games, River Dash. It's a simple time killer based on a classical breakout gameplay. Regarding technical specifications, it uses Canvas for rendering with a base resolution on, on 614 on 976 pixels and auto scaling to feed the screen. All graphical assets are stored in atlases. There are almost no frame animation. We are using twins in order to make the atlases file size as small as possible. Together with sounds and music, the total file size of the game is around 5 megabytes, which is pretty huge in, uh, to be compared with our other games, which are typically around 3 megabytes. So, now let's take a look at the testing results. We tried the game on the five different devices of the different power and operating systems. As you can see, it's still visible that new devices has no performance issues, the, for, starting from iPhone 6 in this table. But it's worth nothing to mention that River Dash was developed back in 2015 with an eye for older devices like, uh, for example, Samsung Galaxy 3, which is the first and the oldest in this table. It was heavily optimized, otherwise it was just won't launch on the older devices. So we can see that now, that now we can fr freely aim at newer devices. But what next? From this point, we can consider HTML5 as a new mobile gaming sector. While it still has very own limitations, mostly regarding the technical side, it has one view advantage, the viral potential. Mobile HTML5 games are web content, and web content is mostly easy to share. So that's why mobile HTML5 games' viral potential is huge. The great examples of uh, viral web content that, that are more known nowadays are videos and GIFs which I shared one million every day. <laughs> yeah, I know, I will get to that GIF later. But not to mention that <coughs> there's an inside joke also that our games can be described as uh, interactive GIFs. But uh, it's worth noting that to use this potential, you need an ecosystem to, where to share, where to distribute. And this already exists. Many social platforms have already rolled out their own solutions for HTML5 mobile games. The most notable nowadays is, of course, Facebook Instant Games, which was launched last November. But it's still in closed beta. I was told today that it's not in closed beta, but it's a very pretty long queue to get to Instant Games. And it currently has no monetization. But it's not the only platform. For example, our friends contact the Russian luggage social network has launched its own HTML5 solution called Direct Games a month ago. Currently, Dark Games supports monetization via app purchases and API support, which allows you to interact with another user. For example, share your game score in your news feed or another user's direct messages. It is going to go out of the closed beta soon. Not to mention that we were among the first 10 developers to launch there on Direct Games is our game River Dash, which was mentioned before. Social features combined with social networks organic traffic are nice, aren't they? Right now, I'm going to. Oh, sorry. 
Right now I'm going to present another case, which involves a social platform which is not known for games well, at least nowadays. iFunny is a social app which allows which allows quick access to user-generated funny pics and videos. Well, the first uh, line is uh, about uh, Dev and Mayo, but I have just uh, was told by iFun representatives that uh, this data is outdated, but the numbers are nice anyways. Almost all of the audience are American teens between 14 and 23 years old. The app is mobile first. It has a web version, but it mostly relies on the app version. So, together we have finally launched a National 5 game as another Pico video in the app's newsfeed across all of their channels, which includes app on App Store, Google Play, Amazon App Store, and the web version called iFunny.co. Uh, regarding the game, to be short, it uh, simplified tower defense when you need to defend the United States from the hurricanes. Its main features are an actual theme, arcade gameplay, a lot of humor, and an ability to share your score across social media or in iFunny itself. Not to mention that the total file size of the game is uh, smaller than an average GIF file size shared on iFunny. For example, the cat GIF shown, be uh, shown before is one megabyte. It, it's pretty short. Even more comparison, this presentation is four megabytes. <coughs> Let's come to the results. The results are, uh, well, see by yourself. The game was played more than one and a half million times by, one, by more than a half, one million users, got 60,000 likes, more than 2,000 shares, and 18,000 of strictly positive comments, and all of them in less than 24 hours after launch. The stats are more than four times higher than average I find in features posts. Impressive, yeah. And it's not only our last project with iFunny. With our partnership, we are going to build a new gaming ecosystem inside of this top USA entertainment app. With such world potential, it's a shame to use HTML5 games as a, advance, at a, as a advertising solution. We constantly see images and videos being used in social media, but uh, it's great, but it doesn't let the user interact with your brand, while games does. Branded games are ideal for engaging your, past, your potential customers. But when speaking about the games as a marketing assets, we should remember that it should be effective. And that's where can I, I can mention another HTML5 advantage. The, let's speak about the accessibility. Here you can see the steps which are required from Resura in order to first access the native mobile game and the HTML5 game. When speaking about native games, you need to go to the App Store, you need to search, you need then to install. Maybe you don't have enough free space on your device, then you need to clean up and install. And maybe you'll drop out. You don't want to take time on installing this game, it's too much. And only then you can play. When it comes to HTML5, we need literally just press the link and play. With the second one chart being pretty short, it's, we can state that HTML5 accessibility it's very good for marketing campaigns. <coughs> there are three keys to success regarding branded promo games. The first one is, of course, gamification, which means that you are going to launch an actual game and not just an animate, animated banner. banner. It should include a user interaction beyond press it and get to our site. The second one is traffic. You need it. Of course you need it. Uh, many large brands has a very strong community across social media, and that's an ideal source of traffic. And final, virality, which means not let the player just not only share their score across the social media mentioned before, but make them want to do it. Design your game line on their target audience, uh, interests, tastes, and sense of humor. The last one is essential when we're speaking about teen audience, which are connect, strongly connected to internet culture and memes. So, I forgot, to, actually I forgot to mention one part about mobile social platforms, I will mention it now. I prefer to divide them into two categories. The first one is uh, directly tied with chat features, such for example Facebook Instant Games or Telegram such as 5 platform. The second one is more like just a game section in social app without forcing the player to use chat, such as uh, contacted direct games mentioned before. The first category has a bigger variety by default because in order to play a game, you need to send a direct message to another user. The second one unfortunately lacks this feature, but at the current moment there are more space for gameplay types, as the platforms of the first category currently mostly support only direct by one by one PvP game sessions. Uh, for example, a chess game is a great example. And so, finally, 
We can't mention one more thing, playable ads. Playable ads is a new, relatively new format, which involves actual user interaction with an ad. Here you can see some examples of playable ads, both for games and brands. It's suitable both for games and brands because it can show the actual gameplay demo. The third one is actually in our concept of a playable ad right into social apps newsfeed, which is also rewardable, uh, reward, rewarded. You need to play a game in order to get a discount. Yeah. We haven't seen this format as last in action yet, but are very enthusiastic about it. It's really interesting to see which platform is going to launch this format first. So why playable ads? Its main advantage is high user engagement, because it gives not, the, not only the advertisement, but an actual entertainment. And that's why marketers are so interested in, it, in this format, as you can see from this uh, Ad Colony Spring 2017 install, app install marketing survey. Uh, more than 45% of uh, installs marketers are most excited about playable ads in this year. So it's a bit outdated, I must say, but now we are working with some uh, partners regarding playable ads, and they are highly interested. So what makes a good playable ad? <coughs> Firstly, you are limited by a short amount of time, typically from 15 seconds to one minute, which means that you need to show only the essential parts of your gameplay. Strip your gameplay down to the core, and let the player win, which means keep it simple, because it's a best way to make them interested in downloading your game within a limited time. No need for those learning curves and another game design stuff. We use it for an actual game. The player should always easily win in an ad and get an offer to install your actual game where it's not as easy as in an ad. Finally, keep it compact, which means as literally as small as possible. Different ad networks have their own file size restrictions, but I should say that the average one is around uh, 600 kilobytes, and the maximum which I've personally met is near one megabyte. <coughs> Compress your ad assets, minify your code. If you are using some non-native JavaScript engine, then slice down the parts of the generated code which are not used, and that will help to achieve you the best results. And finally, if you and if you want to boost your business with such undiscovered marketing methods as cross-platform HTML5 games, you know who to, you made to call. We do HTML5 games with the promo games with the playable ads. We are, have connections with platforms. And most important, we are mobile first, and we keep it sim simple for mobiles. So drop me a line, and we're always ready to help you and discuss your case. And finally, here's our short video summary. Hi, we're Black Snowflake and we make HTML5 games. Working with trusted brands, we've developed more than 20 games in HTML5 since 2013. You can play our games on any device, right in your browser. Our games are very diverse, but what they all have in common is that they're easy to use, they're clean and simple visually, and of course, in gameplay is a lot of fun. You can make money via our games by placing your adverts in them. And we can also add branded boosters and other power-ups linked to your brand. And the most interesting thing of all is that we can create a game based around your brand to increase your target audience's loyalty and strengthen your client's emotional attachment to your product or trademark. Sounds tempting, right? Just drop us a line and we'll be happy to share our ideas about how HTML5 games can work for you and your brand. So, thank you for your invitation. If you have any questions, don't be shy to answer, to ask. Yeah. So, you mentioned briefly about the. Uh, All right, thanks, okay. buddy. So, you mentioned briefly about V Contacty adding monetization options. Can you talk a little bit about that for direct games on V Contacty or how that's going to work? Uh, sorry, you mean how to monetize HTML5 game? Yeah? No, uh, you say it on uh, the V Contacty is adding the section called direct games. Yeah, direct. And you men mentioned that they're adding an ability to make money on v contact you on direct game. Ah, you mean our case? Yes. Uh, to be honest about Rivet, it's performing pretty badly because its uh, game is not ready. It was more like a test game to launch there. It has only one and a purchase, purchase option, 
actually. We're going to launch another game which are more focus on, focused on monetization and the uh, uh, River Dash one was just more for test uh, how much users will play it, right. how much their audience. So I, I'm, I'm curious how it works on v contacting because on Facebook Messenger you cannot spend money. So yeah. how can the user uh, on... Ah, ah, you mean how do you pay? Uh, contact app uh, as well as contact the social network itself, they have their own uh, uh, currency which you can buy for real money. It's called uh, votes in English, Galasa in Russian. So you buy votes, you spend them in the games, and then you convert uh, as a developer them to real money. So we contact it, pays you for them for those. So the player buys from vcontact the yeah, vaults the player and buys from contact then the player spends it in the game and then we share the profits got it thanks uh, thanks there's a couple more questions over here so I'll, I'll just run around uh, I'll start at the back and then come forward <laughs> Uh, thank you for our talk. I'm really interested. All, almost all the games that I see developed in HTML5 for mobile are currently pretty simple. I haven't ever seen a mobile HTML5 3D game or a game with large uh, gameplay. Are you planning some, something like this and do you see any perspective in it? <sighs> Well, right now we are trying to get more of a simple games. This is our business model. Uh, but uh, you maybe mean that there are large HTML5 games, but it's more about the WebGL, which is currently uh, more diverse in case of, in terms of support on mobile devices, as it was with Canvas games around three to five years ago. But I think it will be available in the near future. Thank you. Do we have one, one final question down here? There we go. Uh, you briefly talked about monetization on vContact, but how about um, monetization in general with HTML5 games? For example, on the iFunny. Oh, iFunny, uh, yeah, we have a partnership with iFunny, which <coughs> it's our uh, terms. Uh, to be honest, I can't disclose more right now because it's the first game released. Uh, so you can pin me up for the further de details later. All right. Thanks. Okay, we'll do. Well, this will be the last question, I'm afraid, because then we need to go to our next speaker. But there you go. Uh, I have a small answer to this question. Uh, the latest builds of browsers start supporting uh, web payment API. It's an API for very simplified paying direct from the browser, even without any uh, platform that you are using. So you can actually monetize your web game directly from the browser. <laughs> 